Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about persimmons, and specifically, where to buy a persimmon tree. My personal recommendations, the best places I know of to buy a persimmon tree. Also, what varieties I think you guys should be growing, depending on where you guys live. It really does matter. Um, you know, for someone like me, as an example, we get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. There's a number of Asian persimmons that just will not survive our winter time. Um, and if I lived, let's say, somewhere very warm, like Southern California, there certainly are some varieties. You have pretty much the pick of the litter here, but there are some varieties that are above and beyond the others. So um, I think it's really well worth talking about. I'm going to try to cover a number of areas throughout the U.S., and you can kind of make a decision from there. Um, we've been talking a lot about persimmons recently. We did a video on, um, on Hoshigaki earlier this week making um, dried persimmons is the that's the Japanese term um, for making a dried persimmon uh, so go watch that video we also did an episode of fruit talk talking about how amazing just persimmons are we did a video yesterday we're gonna do a video soon on um, on pruning my tree um, so stay tuned for all of that I mean we really dare I say persimmons have I think become my favorite fruit and um, you're gonna hear a lot more about the persimmon in the future um, it really is something special and I think if you have watched my channel long enough to know um, you know first off if I say something's really tasty it's pretty damn good um, you know I don't think everyone's gonna love a persimmon like I do however I think if you like figs you like dates you like raisins um, if you're growing multiple varieties of figs, I see no reason why you shouldn't be growing a persimmon tree. You can grow a persimmon anywhere you can grow a fig, uh, and then some. Um, so my two big recommendations here for nurseries are ediblelandscaping.com and Just Fruits and Exotics. They have a really wide variety of persimmons that they have fruited, they've researched, they've put a lot of time into Catalog, catalog, uh, cataloging these, finding them, um, selecting them, um, really choosing the ones that are above and beyond the others. But the big reason that I'm selecting these two nurseries is that they, they send you these persimmon trees in a container with soil. Um, you know, they, they ship them to you as a container plant rather than them sending it to you as a bare rooted tree and I just have had very bad experiences um, receiving bare rooted persimmons I've, I've lost about four to five maybe even six persimmon trees that were bare rooted um, and I don't know why that is uh, I just personally don't believe persimmons like to be bare rooted like that um, so I recommend that if you're gonna get them from a nursery um, get them from somebody who's selling them to you in a pot and I, I just find that they do better when you have them in a pot and you put them in the ground or if you have them in a pot and just put them in a larger pot um, I think they perform much better that way and, and you don't kill your you don't lose your tree you know I've, I've just somehow lost like I said four or five six bare rooted persimmon trees over the year for reasons that are completely unknown um, so the varieties I recommend is pretty simple. Um, you can kind of divide persimmons down into two categories. There's Asian persimmons and there's American persimmons. And then there's a third category, I guess, that are hybrids of the both. And you have um, the American persimmon, which is very hardy. As an example, this Meator American persimmon can survive zone four, right? So that's really cold. Uh, that's like at least negative 20 I believe maybe even negative 30 if you find the right American persimmon even if you can find a, a local American persimmon get the seeds from that fruit and plant those seeds definitely one of those seeds will survive and will turn into a really nice tree you'll have yourself a, a beautiful American persimmon um, they do propagate from seed but not true to type so you just created your own your own new variety but they do pretty well from seed it's not like an apple where you plant an apple tree and um it's just crap you know 
um, a lot of these uh, these persimmon seedlings actually do pretty well. So that's something you have to worry for worry about is that if you live in a, a really cold area, you have to go with an American persimmon or you have to go with a hybrid. And there's a couple of hybrids. One I have is Rosianca, which is said to have survived in zone five. They've tested it. Um, basically, they're, they're taking some of those Asian persimmon traits and combining it with the hardiness and maybe even the tree size of the American persimmon. And they're producing something um, that's a little bit of both. And luckily, a lot of these hybrids are becoming more and more hardy. To have an Asian persimmon with the hardiness of an American, that's kind of the best combination, the best of both worlds, because the American persimmons are quite small. I think personally, they're very tasty. Uh, I think they have a lot more persimmon flavor. They taste a lot like a lot more like dates. Um, I think American persimmons in general have a really awesome flavor, and they get a bad rap for their flavor. But to be honest with you, it's it's just not true. Uh, American persimmons are incredibly good. My Rosianca persimmon is wonderful. There's also a variety here called Proc, which is one of the earliest ripening persimmons that exists. Um, so this is a great choice for people in colder places, but also shorter season places. Um, I personally would recommend Proc as an American persimmon. If you wanted a hybrid, I'd recommend either Rosianca or Nikita's Gift. But Nikita's Gift has inherited the qualities of an Asian persimmon. It has the hardiness of the American, but the fruit quality is like an Asian. Um, the difference is really in the is really in the flavor and the size of the fruit, and also maybe even slightly the texture of the fruit. Um, you may have different textures between American persimmons and Asian persimmons. I personally think you should have one of each. That's my own personal thing here is that I think you should try an American. I think you should try an Asian. You should see which one you like better. They're not really all that different, um, but they are, I think, totally worth growing and figuring out which one you like the best. Uh, I also would recommend getting one that's astringent and one that's not astringent. Um, so you could have an astringent American persimmon because all the American persimmons are astringent, but only a handful of the Asian persimmons are not astringent. So um, I'd also recommend that. And one of the more hardy Asian persimmons um, that's not astringent, that you could eat like a fuyu, you can eat it like, a, like an apple, has a crunch to it. I would recommend a Jiro. Any of the Jiro varieties here, we have Ichi, Kei, Kai, Kei, Jiro, Asian persimmon here. This one's very productive. It's quite hardy. Again, zone, down to zone six. It's got nice fruit and it's got that perfect, basically a fuyu quality to it. Um, so that's my personal recommendation for someone in a colder place. Um, however, if you lived in a warm place, there are some Fuyu type persimmons um, that require pollination, like the Chienting persimmon here. There's also the Maru persimmon. Um, there's coffee cake and chocolate. So chocolate, I believe, is the persimmon that needs to get pollinated. Or maybe it's coffee cake, let's hear. Yeah, so this is a unique Japanese persimmon when pollinated has seeds that make the flesh turn a chocolate brown color. Rich in complex complex flavor. So these are really the king. These are better. These are a step above in my opinion. The only issue is that these brown colored persimmons on the inside, like Chianting, like coffee cake, like chocolate, like Maru, um, they're just not very hardy and they're very difficult to grow here unfortunately they they really um they really may not survive they may survive the information's not clear we need to do some testing on it there are some people in maryland i have a friend in maryland that's growing i think chocolate or, or coffee cake one of the two um so it can work you know you can maybe have these guys in a more protected area but uh it's a little bit of a of a stretch and you do need some pollinators with these types. You do need to have a male. Finding a male is not that difficult. I think either coffee cake or chocolate is the perfect persimmon. 
as a pollinator. Whichever one of those it is, I can't remember. Read the description, you'll find it. Um, if you just get yourself one of those, you have yourself the pollinator, and you pollinate all these varieties that you have. The issue is that, yeah, you're getting the extra fruit quality. It does incre It's supposed to increase the fruit quality across the board. I believe it. I don't doubt it. I'm sure it does. But the issue is now you have seeds inside your fruits. And sometimes it, uh, it can be a bit annoying. Personally, I think uh, if it's got more than three seeds, it's pretty annoying. Um, but you know what? If it's if it's gonna if it's gonna be worth it, it's kind of something you have to play around with, right? But that's something you need if you guys live in those warmer places, like Southern California, you know, Texas. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's varieties that are more suited to Florida, and Just Fruits and Exotics is in Florida, and they have varieties that are local to the South. So I think that's a great area, a great website to look for. Um, when if you live in the south look for some of the varieties on this website and do your research um, so we have basically we've selected some of the varieties that I recommend for colder places um, now what about some of the astringent persimmons that we can grow anywhere uh, that are the best tasting because we talked about coffee cake we talked about maru those are the non-astringent types. Those are more like the Fuyu types with the brown interior. What about the persimmons that are astringent? All right, so I personally recommend, I think one of the best persimmons, it's very highly regarded as one of the best, is the Seijo persimmon. Another one that's really, really tasty, and I've tasted it myself, actually grown in California. Someone shipped me a box of these, is the Honan Red Persimmon. Um, it's incredible. It's very date-like. It reminds me, though, a lot more of a of an American persimmon. It it has a bigger size to it than an American persimmon. Um, but for me, it's uh, it's very very good. It's so it's very hard to beat. And I think a lot of people between the two of them, those are probably the two tastiest persimmons that uh, are commonly found. I'm sure there's others out there, but in terms of the astringent types. Those are the two that a lot of people go for. Um, and you'll note that they're both Asian persimmons, right? A lot of people highly regard the Asian persimmons being the tastiest um, or more tastier than the American persimmons. However, I'm not entirely sh sold on that just yet because the Rosianca is an incredible piece of fruit. Absolutely incredible. Um, so, you know, it's hard to say. Um I'd also recommend for people that live around me, Seijo is a great variety because it's actually hardy to about zone six, somewhere in zone six. Even though it's an Asian, it's one of the hardier types like Jiro. So I, I would recommend if you guys are interested in getting yourself an astringent, go with Seijo. Um, there's others out here that are, that are really good varieties as well, like um, Guillambo is a good one if you guys live in the south. It's big. It's like a Hychea type. Um, probably really good for drying like Hychea is. Um, Great Wall I've heard really good things about. The Howe River people like to uh, rave about and it's kind of new and people are really interested in it. The Inchon Persimmon I was told by a friend of mine that this is a very, very productive persimmon that survives um, very easily where I live and uh, this would be like the only persimmon I ever need um, there's also Izu which is another Jiro type that's also very hardy we have the Cassandra persimmon this is a new hybrid that people have been breeding this one's been proven as a hybrid to uh, survive down to negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit uh, what else do we have here Nikita's Gift, this is another hybrid. Again, more along the lines of a Asian, as you can see. This might be a good choice, actually, for myself, because I've been trying to find a, a large Asian persimmon that's a hybrid. And uh, this one looks pretty big. I have Miss Kim. Miss Kim ta tastes a lot like a marshmallow. It's quite good. Uh, in fact, I think it's really good. Um, super sweet. Proc, we've talked about. 
This Rojo Brillante, this is a, uh, a persimmon that I think is more along the lines of a high chia type, and people, you know, value it for that kind of uh, persimmon. The Rosianca, we've talked about. Shang, this is another one that is really highly recommended, especially from Edible Landscaping. They really like Shang. Um, they really also like Smith's Best. And you can see Shang here. Um, I don't know if they have Smith's Vest listed on their website, but you could probably contact them here. They have it on um, Just Fruits and Exotics website. Tam Cam is supposed to be one of the hardier um, Asian persimmons that you could grow. And yeah, I mean, this is uh, it's a pretty wide variety here of persimmons here, guys. Um, I do believe Gil Ya is one of the earliest ripening Asian persimmons uh, that ripens pretty close to proc as one of the earliest ripening persimmons that that really exists. So uh, pretty cool. Yeah, and they all have different shapes and different sizes. The last thing I guess is, that's worth mentioning here is the shape of the tree, the size of the tree. The American persimmons can be very large trees. You know, they can reach 40 feet if you let them. Uh, but I would say most situations they're going to get to at least, you know, maybe 15 feet tall, 20 feet tall, no problem. Um, so keep that in mind with your tree. You can keep it smaller. You can have a more open center. You can be maybe a little bit more aggressive with your pruning. But the Asian persimmons, most of them pretty much top out at about 10 foot by 10 foot. Some of them go to like 14 or 16 feet. Um, you know, these are not as large of trees mainly because of the heavy fruit set um, the more energy I think that's required when putting it into uh, into the fruit so you know weigh the weigh the pros and cons here guys these are my two recommendations for nurseries I hope you guys enjoyed this one I hope you guys get yourself a persimmon man I'm telling you they're an incredible piece of fruit everybody should have a persimmon uh, we'll talk to you guys soon uh, take care, guys.